Attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you for joining the fourth in our series of senior living webinars. Today's focus and topic is on mass notification. Once again, I have with me today Chris Prada, Regional Manager with Status Solutions, and Amanda miller Lau, our Senior Living Specialist here at Unity Connected Solutions. My name is Paul McDevitt, Director of Marketing, and I'll be your MC. Between them, uh, Chris and Melanda have experience of working with several hundred senior living facilities across Canada, and both public and private, large organizations and even single um, facilities, single building facilities. And this applies to, to all of those. Um, as with previous webinars, you know, we're going to start by setting the context and, and getting a description of what mass notification is. The, the term is quite broad, so perhaps, Chris, um, maybe you can just sort of give us a brief sort of um, overview of mass notification. Sure, and thanks for everybody joining on the call today. Um, this solution is actually just a small piece of the overall solution that we've been talking about in previous webinars. But mass notification is a critical component as related to any emergency response plan. It's the ability to control these alerts, to automate these responses, to remove the human element in sometimes emergency situations or even in routine actions. So rather than relying on individuals to take action, to get your messages out, you have a single alerting server that's going to set out the response based on rules and escalation that have been built in and then pushing those alerts or those events out to any and all communication devices. Whether it's a life safety situation, such as a fire drill, or a routine event, maybe it's um, letting residents know about a particular outing or some activity that's going to happen. So regardless of whether it's routine, critical situations, it's all about saving time, removing elements of human intervention, and creating an automated response. Thanks, Chris. So, Amanda, um, perhaps this is a time to maybe uh, step down one level and look at some of the aspects or applications, if you want, the real-world applications of mass notification. So there's a variety of different things. Um, obviously, we think about emergency situations where there's lockdown and emergency response needs to be taken um, into consideration. Um, but we want to make sure that it's a calm response and uh, people stay calm when it is an emergency. That first the staff is notified, the residents are notified, and then in certain cases if it's outside agencies that need to be informed or family members. And different media can be used um, when um, sending out this information to them. So a lockdown can be obviously an emergency situation. It could be an outbreak on a certain wing on a floor, or it could be um, a full-on evacuation. But then there's non-emergencies as well that Chris alluded to. So it could be um, medication reminders or check-in um, of residents to make sure that they uh, are checking in daily, that we know that, that they're OK. This will offload the staff and make them more efficient in other other things to take care of the residents. Yeah, so taking an extension of what Amanda just spoke about, um, one of the issues with any of these uh, mass notification is about escalation. What happens if somebody doesn't take action? What happens if there is that human error that takes place? And mass notification ensures that regardless of who needs to be alerted, when we need to fan out these escalations, whether it's to go from individual first responder to management and upper staff, um, the solution ensures that the appropriate escalation takes place in the appropriate timing, which also lends itself to an issue of redundancy. What if something goes wrong? What if your phone system is not working? What if the email doesn't get out? Part of that mass notification tool, and when we say mass notification, it means hitting every possible device. So we can send emails, we can send text messages, we can send voice calls, which simply ensures that those messages get out, the appropriate escalation takes place, and that we do have redundancy in the event of a failure of whatever piece of technology there might be. 
and by escalation, we're not just meaning escalating up to somebody of a higher level. We just we mean making sure that if a step, if a step, yes, if a step is is supposed to happen and it doesn't take place, that there is some kind of redundancy there. That that something else could happen to make sure that nothing is missed, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So so maybe you know one of the things we said devices. We've used that word. Um, I, I guess um, you know one of the one of the things we want to look at maybe is that there are emergency processes today that, that take place. Someone might say, um, well, why is this necessary? I have, you know, a, an emergency plan. I have a, something that, that will actually take care of this today. I don't need any technology to help. So, so you know, Amanda, is, is it, isn't it possible that I don't need to do anything, that everything's fine the way it is today? Well, sure. There's laws in place and there's uh, emergency plans that every home has to have in place so when there is an emergency they know what to do um, and and tests have to be run right so they have to to make sure that testing is done and that their emergency plan um, works um, it doesn't always work when it is uh, a real emergency um, and sometimes people get test fatigue and they know it's coming the testing is coming so they just go through the motions. When everything is automated, it helps, I think, um, the staff go through a real-life emergency and all the escalations taking place automatically and makes it more efficient. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, one of, a great example perhaps might be, you know, when we get on a plane, for example, and we sit there and uh, the, the staff at the beginning, you know, by law, they have to, to walk through the emergency protocols, but you know, if you look up and look around, there's very few people actually taking interest. But I'm sure that in the case of we had one where the plane uh, dropped like a hundred feet, and it, and, you know, the um, things dropped out of the ceiling, and I'm sure half of them weren't quite sure how to put them on, right? Because they weren't really paying attention because it wasn't really an emergency, right? So the, the point is really though is that what mass notification is about, and all of these things we're talking, it's about time. It's about response in critical situations, it's about making things faster, making things more efficient, and removing the human element. So you take a fire evacuation, yes there's rules in place, yes people are doing tests, yes you have a fire plan. However, on top of that you can still save time. And by having mass notification tools built in that automate the process, so the instant there's an event, piece of equipment has already pushed out the alert, have already made the announcements. We don't have to wait for someone to get to the fire panel to take action. It has been automated. Time is critical in an emergency. And these types of tools ensure that people get out more quickly. And would it be valid to say that you know a lot of the emergency plans I've seen are really a one-size-fits-all emergency? I think that is typical of any emergency, you cannot plan for everything. You plan for the most probable. But in the worst case, but with reality that, is emergencies happen the way emergencies happen. But yeah. with mass notification tools that are automating it, is it not possible to, to actually... Um, but you can build in everything. Yeah. You can build in every potential rule because the rules are sitting within an alerting engine. And so that you can respond differently. Differently depending, depending on the situation, yeah. absolutely. So let's look at, so we talked about devices, I mean it's a bit um, of a high level term, but we're talking about communication devices, so what, what can be supported and how does this, this notion of redundancy we keep talking about, how does that come into play here? So often um, in the world of term mass notification, it's often thought about as paging systems, about being able to hear an announcement over the air over a certain distance within a particular parameter. Status Solutions looks at mass notification as being the ability to reach every communication device out there. So regardless of if people are carrying cell phones, walkie-talkies, pagers, um, you know, wireless handsets, it really doesn't matter. To us, mass notification is being able to push that event to any and all communication devices. Um, listed on the screen here talks about a lot of the traditional things that we think about cell phones and, and walkie-talkies and things like that. But there are means, such as strobe lights, turning on a light, lighting a digital sign, um, 
switching on or off other media. This tool can deliver it to any of all of these devices, but then in a controlled manner. So maybe the first task is we send out a voice call, and then based on timing, we then light certain digital signage, and when do we fan out to email and family outside the building. So if there's a means of communication, we can hit it other than maybe smoke signals. Anything. <laughs> you can over it. You can I'm sure there's a way even to do that. But I guess the, so, uh, the, the point there is that so redundancy we're talking about here isn't so as people would think having two servers or, mm -hmm. or it's the fact that we're using different, different, media. different media and, and each one of them has different response Absolutely. types. So, so using them in the right order and in the right way is the important fact. Yeah, that, often right? people think, oh, we rely so heavily on our smartphones, but we forget that the cell towers are down. Your phone doesn't work. If the power is out, internet doesn't work. We want to be able to hit multiple media that regardless of where the failure is, the message still gets out. Excellent. So, so again, it, you know, in terms of trying to put more context around what we've talked about, you know, let's talk about some real life case studies. We haven't used the names of organizations here, you know, clearly, but right. but these are real world situations that we've run into and how they've used them that might give it more meaning as to, to what exactly we're talking about here. Yeah. So the reference to the first item being check-in, this is a huge time savings for the facilities and also makes it much more convenient for the residents. Um, we have a facility whereby the system actually calls every resident every morning. It's, it's a courtesy wake-up call, but that same call is used to ensure that that person is up and okay. So before, they had several dedicated staff sitting there all day long calling staff, calling resident. Now the system actually automatically, automatically calls the resident and says, this is your 9 a.m. call. If they do not respond, a report is produced, so now we're no longer checking on every resident, we're only checking on those that did not so respond. So man managing by exception, which is much more... Absolutely. Uh, Around the same check-in, we have another facility whereby um, the, the check-in is being used for other functionality. Um, you have residents that are visiting, and you want to check on those visitors. So there's a few guests. This is not part of the normal, everyday task we could automate those. We have people on a guest state, so we call out to be reaching out to those people to let them know what's going on. So what's fan out calling, Amanda? So fan out calling, we have a home that uh, has their fire panel integrated with the system. And when there's an emergency, there's calling that will go out to not only staff members that are on site, but people who are not there and need to come in to help evacuate. So the system is set up so um, when there is an emergency and they have to evacuate the whole facility, they have people that live close by that are staff members that will come in and help evacuate the, uh, the home itself. But isn't part of that the, the, the notion of fan out that, that there are certain people that get notified initially to do some kind of verification and then they in turn set up the next step so Correct. that it's a very controlled broadening of, of access to people so that's the, the fanning out piece of it that so it's not you know that I automatically call 50 people I might call five and they're, they're, they're the first responders and then they in turn initiate the second step right Correct. depending on how big the emergency is. Yeah gets. depending on the emergency that, that notion that, that we don't respond to every emergency in the same way right Correct. Which is more, you know, I, I, I guess this controlled and measured response keeps people, you know, it's a calmer way of, of responding to emergencies than a panic driven, let's always <laughs> raise the flag. And, right. Yeah. But it's, not just, it's not just emergencies, right? Right. We can do reminders around non emergency events. Well, I think that's the last one, is, you know, there are quite a few um, organizations using these standard tools for reminders, right? And reminders in different ways. So, um, there's one home that the, the head of nursing there, she sends out a reminder every Monday that her staff needs to weigh every resident that is there. So it goes out to the staff, it's just automatically done. 
once the reminder is set up. Other homes um, have, there's different events that go on in, in other homes as well, and um, the events can be driven out as a reminder as well. So it may not be a weekly as the wait is, but they can be um, a quick message mass notification. So something goes out to all the staff, or somebody wants to have a staff meeting with a particular people, a quick mass notification can go out to 10 people. It doesn't necessarily need to be the whole, the whole home itself. Right, I guess that's the point, is that by using tools, you can make it very flexible and very specific and targeted as opposed to this, you know, again, one size fits all response. I mean, even medication, I mean, medication is uh, obviously critical, um, you know, in terms of taking it, not just that you are taking, but taking it the right time of day. So, so well, it's not just reminders for medication, yeah. just simple things like um, outings, appointments. The system allows unlimited scheduling of messages. So we can push out alerts for every individual differently and escalate it, as well as hitting other devices. Call someone, email someone, text someone, call their family members, and on and on for a specific reminder. So again, you know, offloading staff from non mundane tasks. Yeah, yeah, from mundane tasks that, that and, and putting more emphasis on the more crucial tasks of well being, right? So And then I have uh, a home now that is making sure that they have emails of family members. So if there is an outbreak a message can be sent out automatically to that certain wing or if it's a building as well. So um, we've talked about what we're trying to achieve in terms of targeted, specific, flexible notification. Um, maybe uh, this chart, it's a, bit, it's a bit of an architectural chart, but maybe you can use that, Chris, to sort of explain how something like Sarah can actually achieve that. Yeah, I think this is really important because we've been talking about mass notification, but a big component of that is the alerting engine. How is this actually happening? Where are the rules being set? Where are those databases of who is to be contacted and when? So at the core of the solution, as we said at the beginning of this, mass notification is a small piece of what we term situational awareness. At its core is the server sitting in the center of the solution. The Sarah server and our previous seminars spoke to some of its other capabilities, but things such as pull cords and pendants and wheelchair sensors and door sensors, a host of sensors. Today we're talking about the mass notification component. So if we look at the diagram, on the left-hand side is all of these events that might be coming in. Whether it is an alert being driven because we have to lock down the building because of a flu outbreak, or because it is an event such as a fire situation. These events come into the Sarah server. Here we build the rules. What is the escalation? What are those um, alerting devices we need to push those messages out to? Who are the teams that make them up? Rules sit within the Sarah server, and then when there's an event, it will execute those rules to push the alerts out, so if you look on the right hand side of the screen now, to all of the mass notification devices, whether it's cell phones, pagers, walkie talkies, digital signage, as we spoke about earlier. So at its core is a server taking a triggering event and then determining where do I deliver that message. Is it a caregiver simply responding to a pull cord in the bathroom, or is it actually a mass notification requirement to push out to staff. We have to evacuate because of a fire on the third floor, southwest corner of the building. So I want to alert, um, take a little look at these devices. We've talked about the traditional cell phones, pagers, walkie-talkies, etc. But I want to draw your attention to one item, the very first item on that list where we listed the Sarah eMessenger. What this is, is an application that Status Solutions developed that is going to be the next wave of notification and alerting tools. This is leveraging smart devices. You've always heard the term, there's an app for everything. Well, this is our app to mass notification. Being able to put a device in, in management's hands that allow them to use this 
as a command and control center, I can see everything going on at once. I can see what alerts are happening, who's responding to the alert on a smart portable device in my pocket. Um, this tool is also being driven by things like electronic medical records, by tablets being put into these homes for doing other things. Um, and Status Solutions is on the leading edge of providing applications so that the alerts can become even more intelligent, even more um, visual, and allow people to see what's going on. So the, so the notion of mass notification that up till now would be, I send out alerts, it's a one-way exactly. um, activity perhaps, right? So by taking something like eMessenger, we're making it two-way and collaborative perhaps in that? Absolutely, so it's more than just two-way, it becomes three-dimensional because mm -hmm. I'm not only seeing what alerts are responded to and who's responding, but I can jump in, I can see where I need to jump in and, and help out. I can drive live two-way conversation around an alert. So instead of an alert going out and five caregivers showing up to the same event, we all can see who's responding. We can all see who's best to respond. So it better handles the notion that when something does happen, people aren't always in the place that they're expected to be. You know, I'm not on the third floor right now. I'm, you know, maybe in the exactly. operations room on the, you know, the maintenance room. You know, you, you're assuming in an emergency plan that everybody's exactly where you want them to be to respond, right? So this, this takes into account that, that they can't do that necessarily. And is, so this is an app that would run on... So like basically it runs on, on smart devices, so, so tablets and... Um, smartphones. This does not run on a PC. So it's, but I mean it's not um, you know, operating system dependent, so it could be Android, could be iOS, could be... Basically Android and iOS. Yeah. Okay. Um, the key thing is here though is that this runs both over wireless, being Wi-Fi, and cellular if the device is equipped. Oh, so if I was um, a management person, I'm away from the, the building... The uh, alerts are still, still coming, coming through, through. you still see what's happening. But it also speaks to redundancy. In the event, if your Wi-Fi is down, yeah. the system will switch over to cellular. So or if it's a bigger situation, as we had that huge outage a few years back, um, where the cell towers were down, um, the Wi-Fi will continue to function within the building. So it's going to swing either way. Excellent. So it hits all the buttons. Right. <laughs> Literally. So, so that's basically the, 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 the overview to data topic. I mean, our goal is not to, um, to go beyond 30 minutes when we do this. Uh, I don't believe we have any questions today. Um, if, you know, if you've got a minute or two, if you want to quickly try and uh, send us a, a, a question through the chat window that, that comes up, and we'll try and answer it. In the meantime, what we will point out is that this is, as I said, was the fourth in the, the series. Um, the very first one we did was around smoke detection and fire safety. Um, we've done mobility for us, and this is the mass notification. Uh, in two weeks' time, July 21st, we'll be looking at environmental monitoring because the same system that can do all those other things can also be used for uh, monitoring your environment. Again, a great way to offload you know, what we would consider to be mundane tasks from your staff. And in the final one, we will talk about security, which is around things like access control and camera notification. Um, I don't know if there's anything we want to say to summarize this topic, Chris? No? I, I think we've covered it well. I think the one thing that people need to understand as we go through each of these seminars, um, any one component can be deployed independently. So a building may be looking at, my only concern is how can I get better communication? This tool can integrate with any and all of the existing systems to deliver just this functionality. But also it gives you a migration path where you can add these other functionalities as budgets allow or as things change. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the summary I will, I, I will provide from this is that a lot of people look at um, what, what, that we see when we talk to people and say, oh, I've got something in place today, meaning they have a system that manages their pull cords or, um, you know, they have a fire panel in place and they think that, you know, that they have, that there's a cost to putting in other technology. One of the things I would say is that um, by having a single system that can actually do all of the things we've talked about so far, um, there are other 
um, ways to look at that that cost that you're investing. There's an ROI on this which goes to the staff uh, time reduction in taking care of a lot of the mundane tasks and actually at the same time increasing your ability to respond to things like emergencies but also you know generic mundane tasks as well. And so hopefully that comes across. So with that in mind, uh, we're coming up to the, the end of it. I would like to thank everybody for joining and uh, just remember we'll send you a, a, an email out with the place where if you need to you can see the recording and there will be a um, registration email going out for the following session on environmental monitoring. Thank you very much.